We debuted Sunday today back on April the 17th of this past year. The subject of our first profile that morning was Leslie Odom Jr., who played Aaron Burr in the white hot cultural phenomenon Hamilton. Since then, we've spent time with actors and actresses, singers and songwriters, disruptors and CEOs, superstars and downright legends like Bette Midler and Dolly Parton. A look back now at our famous Sunday breakfast friends of 2016. Cheers. Thanks for having me over. Thanks for coming. Wait, other people are going to see this. <laughs> Who actually needs the glasses they're wearing today? <laughs> I am living a lottery ticket life. I don't even know if I deserve to be here. One of the words that people use describing you is quirky. <laughs> quirky is pronounced quirky. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Be... Nice. This is me. My Ooh. name is Chelsea. <laughs> Are you finding that having a 16, 17 month old at home changes the way you look at music? You literally just like wake up, look in the mirror and go, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> what is the Dirk Bentley signature concert move? Shotgunning a beer every night. You can't see it, but I'm actually wearing the uh, undisputed heavyweight uh, <laughs> belt. I have a title belt on for undefeated in the shotgunning department. I don't hear music, I see it. And, and my job as a lyricist is to close my eyes and hear the peaks and the valleys and see the landscape, the vista that the band has created sonically, musically. I then have to find a story that fits into that landscape. Why is it that Taylor Swift, Adele, Beyonce, why do they call you? What is the Ryan Tedder thing? It's because I smell so good. <laughs> it's just Can the you smell. smell right now? It's yeah, I was. I didn't want to say ridiculous. anything. I think what I do, maybe that's specific to me, is I have a certain emotional currency. So what I'm what I'm constantly chasing is like physical goosebumps at all times. Trayvon will never get to be an older man. Black children, their childhood stole from them robbed of our names and our language, stole again. It's been a cycle, black America, again, again. It's like I work all the time, that's why somebody says, you never age. I said, when have I got time? I'm too busy. <laughs> Gotta ask you, the moves. Oh, it's a little God. bit of Elvis, it's a little bit of Chippendales. <laughs> Most of the time, it's just being playful, and if I can do all that, then, then they immediately realize, heck, I can too, and that, that's the fun part about it, so. Uh, well, my wife appreciates that, uh, well, your ability to have I'm fun sorry, with those jeans. I'm sorry, I'll teach you, I'll teach you a move or two. <laughs> Before GoPro, you and I couldn't have self-documented our float down the river. We could have maybe gotten a friend to stand on the shore or on the bridge and film us as we go by, but it would have been impossible for us to capture that experience and take it home and share it with our, our friends and family. Introducing Borby Parker. Do you guys think you could make more money if you weren't giving away half your glasses? I think we could certainly maximize short-term profits, but we think we'd be making a mistake. Carpooling to most people with strangers was a non-starter just a few years ago. Everyone's doing it now. We actually had a tagline, your friend with a car, and we encouraged people to sit up front because we realized we had to change behavior. I'm told there's one impersonation you did just so that you can meet the person. Yes, that would be Prince. Dearly beloved. And what did he say about the impersonation? He sort of turned around to me and he said, it's cool. Oh. And he rubbed my arm. Oh. Is there anything that's off limits to Chelsea Handler? I mean, I'm not going to make fun of ugly babies. But they exist. They do exist, but I don't think it's my job to point them out. Where was the moment where you thought, oh, this is something I want to do beyond just messing around with my family? Yeah. In college, I joined um, an improv comedy group. Ours was named Quip Fire with an exclamation point. Like, firing those quips, Willie. Really good stuff. Clever. All anyone wants to talk about is Donald Trump. Donald Trump? What's it like to do Hillary Clinton with Hillary Clinton this close to you? I felt a sense of sisterhood. I don't know 
hope she felt that. I hope, I hope she did. I, I had so much fun. I'm eating tongue with Anthony Bourdain. Okay, I gotta get you on the record on a couple things. Pumpkin spice. Who's eating this stuff? Is there some vast demographic of pumpkin craze? You know, people hanging outside of what, you know, whatever the pumpkin outlet is, like, like a methadone clinic, waiting for them to open up so they can get their pumpkin spice. So this is all the onion right here? Yeah, this, this is whole the room. Yeah. Trump wakes up at 4 a.m. to pack self-bagged lunches for rest of week. It's okay. <laughs> Hillary Clinton bowls over catcher to score winning run in campaign staff softball game. Sure. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> it's Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. What have the wars meant to you? What impact have they had on you? War humanizes you enormously. I mean, it traumatized me, it almost killed me. But it also enabled me to really become a full human being. So when you come in from home, yeah. you're walking toward the theater, see the Hamilton sign, you still get that feeling? I can imagine what that 17-year-old kid would have thought about a moment like this. I mean, he would be really proud. Hey everybody! Welcome to Watch What Happens Live. Oh my god! I think that shelf tells you everything you need to know about Andy Cohen. There's his Peabody Award on one shelf, and just below it is Julie Andrews' tea bag from her appearance on this show. That's true. One of the things I think you've done is help ballet break through to an entirely new audience of people. It's incredible to see the audience change, you know, over the past four years. You mind if I take you to lunch? Hey man, let's do it. What was it like being in the middle of that storm to be NWA at that time and having it blow up so big? It was it was a trip because it was fun, because we were living our dreams. It was also crazy at the same time because we're going from being just local guys to these kind of ambassadors for free speech. If you had to pick your favorite Bette Midler movie. Focus, focus. Glorious morning. Makes me sick. I have to say, I'm flawless in that movie. I do. I have to say that. Every time I talk to one of these journalists, ah! every single time you write, I picture them having sex. You know what? So. Yes. I'm. <clears throat> and I'm. Okay. Well, now that you brought it up, yeah. Yeah, here I am. All right. I'm thinking about it. <laughs>